You're watching B-Boy 45, the hospital zone TV and radio station. My name is Chris, but more importantly, I've got my good friend Maya with me. Maya, are you on the air with us? Yeah. Hi. Yes, you're there. And, and anytime you show up, it happens to be a special edition of Maya's latest news to keep us in the groove. Tell us why today happens to be so special. Um, because Paulo Costanzo is calling in. Paulo Costanzo! Yeah! There, there are people there? There's hundreds. There's an audience? There's an audience. There is, yeah. But the most important audience is right next to you on the screen there. Maya, take it away, my friend. Okay, so um, my first question for you is who or what inspired you to start acting? Well, you just jump right into it. Before we get there, Maya, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for having me. I feel like I feel I've been looking forward to this for weeks. Um, me too. My, my, cause my manager like was like, are you interested in this? And I looked, I was like, Oh my God, totally. Uh, and then I kind of stalked you a little bit and saw, <laughs> watched some of your videos and like checked out your, like what your what songs you're listening to. Um, and so I've been looking really forward to it, but also this is the first time I've seen your house and your room as I'm looking at it is like the perfect teenage girl room. You've got yeah. Shazam on your shirt. Yes. You've got, who is that? Is that JLo or Ariana Grande? Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. You've got a, a house, a dollhouse bookcase. Um, yeah. And I have a giant Hollywood like banner type thing. On Obviously. The so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's all. <laughs> All right. Yes. Ask, and, ask and me anything pillows. you want. And emoji <laughs> pillows. And what's that yeah. square thing that they're, is that like a tray that they're eating from? Is that one with the tongue, like licking up milk? Cause it's a cat head. Uh, no. It, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> You've never had to think about your room this much. What's that? Like <laughs> that, that rectangular thing that's right in front of the emoji pillows. Oh, that's an iPad. <laughs> Got it. Okay. That's a lot easier than a tray of milk. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and I have a giant um, poster from the movie Pushing Dead over here. So, Can I see it? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try to... Um, yeah, that's big. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. A necklace collection, jewelry. Yeah, it's a lot of necklaces too. I, I thought they were medals. I'm like, there are those medals? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> many races, many races won. Yeah. The Ariana Grande would creep me out a little bit when I was sleeping. Just any life size cutout, I'm I'm afraid of. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, when... should... Sorry, what? I want a cutout of you in my room. <laughs> In the okay. same pose as Ariana Grande. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we first got that, um, my uh, mom loved scaring me and my sister with it. Okay. So she put it everywhere. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I can identify with that. I have a seven-year-old son and we, we used to scare him a lot because his reaction was so good. Like he would like, ah! Like he would scream like a like a like a fifties movie star scream, uh, but then then I scared my friend in the same way one day, and he got really mad at me, and I and, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't be scaring my developing seven year old son's brain like five <laughs> times a day. So we've stopped doing that. He tries to scare us, but he's not he's not good at it, at it yet. He can't hide right, but he's working on it. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, my mom loves scaring me and my sister, and we love scaring our mom, so. Perfect. It's, yeah. It's, it's perfect. consensual. That's what makes it good, is that it's good. With my son, it was not. He's like, if you're ruining my life, I don't feel safe in the world. We're like, hey, shut up. <laughs> but we're oh, better now. Quick. Since we're <laughs> off to a fun start already, I thought, you know, what we'd like to do with Maya's show is grab a couple pictures of the screen while while it's on so she could put on instagram and i think i just grabbed the best guest photo i've taken to date right there you crazy man 
that's, that's incredible. I have a weird mustache. My hair is nine inches tall. It's gorgeous. Uh, Don't change. I can't thing. wait to show. I'll show my kid. I'll, that's my and that's my impression of my son. Perfect. He'll like it. All right, I'll get out of your way. Go ahead. My- <laughs> I want life size cutouts of both of you in my house. That would scare my son. He's having two of you, two people Perfect. lurking. No, I think a life size cutout of Chris would scare me. <laughs> yes, I was going to say that would scare a lot of people. Hold on one sec. I'm going to show you something that I've never shown anybody before. Okay. Can you oh, still man. hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. So it's just We're- as I'm getting this, I'm going to tell you what, what this is. So when I first met my wife many years ago, uh, we were in LA and I got, a, I got invited. I don't even know how I got invited, but I got invited to Marilyn Manson's like uh, art gallery for a party. Uh, okay. And we got there uh, and I was like, all right, this is interesting. And I got there and they had a lot of his art. He's a really good artist for one. I was surprised about that. But at the door, they handed everybody out these. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screenshot oh this. I need a picture of this so I can show my mom and my sister. So... <laughs> Everybody walking by the studio right now seeing her screen is like, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. this is this yeah. is what this is what scarred my son <laughs> for, for the first like four years of his life. That's what you used to scare your son? And it does great like this. <laughs> <laughs> or like this. Any reveal. <laughs> This works really well. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's going to give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Maya, you hey. need to find one of those. Yeah. Think that is a screenshot. Wait, can you see me through the nostril? Hey. Perfect. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> got your new social media picture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, who or what inspired you to start acting? Oh, acting questions. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I, I just want to, like, you know, just keep talking to you about random stuff, but uh, I guess I'll ask you some questions. <laughs> okay. So I was thinking about this because I watched one of your things and I, and I saw that that was one of the um, questions. Um, so this, I mean, the, Dustin Hoffman, like I saw my mom forced me to watch The Graduate. And at that time I was like some old silly movie. Like I just didn't want to watch it. And then I was riveted and um, he was amazing in it. And he wasn't like Robert Redford. Like he wasn't like this really handsome waspy movie star. He was like a short nebbishy Jewish guy. So it was very inspiring. And he just had like this fire to him that I was like, I want to do that. But my mom was an actress. She went to theater school. She gave up that career, frankly, because she had me and she was a single mom for a while. Um, but she always kind of imbued me with that. Um, but I wanted to tell you a story that I've never told in any interview before, just because I, I don't know. I just wanted to, to tell you this. It's like, it's maybe like a little personal, um, which is maybe why it'll be good. So I was really shy in school. I was extremely shy. I, had, I moved schools a lot because we just ended up moving a lot. Um, and in high school, I was very shy. And this one day, I was, I was doing a test. And, like, I got bullied a little bit. No one ever, like, beat me up. But I definitely got bullied because I was, like, I don't know, maybe because I was, like, shy. And I was doing a test. And I was writing this test. And I accidentally dropped the test on the floor. And there's and a guy next to me who was like, quote unquote, like cooler and more popular than me. He was someone who was like not mean to me ever. But I reached down to get it and he stomped on it with his big shoe. And he like ground it into the floor. And nobody could see but me. And I looked down and I looked at him and I was so hurt. I was like, what? And I know his name. I'm not going to say his name. But. I was just looked at him and he just like kind of sneered at me and he just went back to his test. And at that moment I was like, I'm not going to be shy anymore. That was the moment that was like a huge turning point in my life because 
the fact that he felt he could do that to me and I didn't have a voice and I was too nervous or shy to say anything like that catapulted my drive. And that really filtered into acting too. Once I found it, like I, it, that was a huge turning point for me. Isn't that a weird story? I don't know why I wanted to share that with you, but I did. <laughs> um, so uh, you play. And you're like, I'm uh, moving right along. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, you know, I just, um, to be honest, my next question is about Royal Pains. And we were, my family and I have been rewatching it. So we just watched an episode. And we're on season four where Jeremiah comes in. And I'm just watching it. I'm like, I can so relate to him. Like, I'm like, I never know what to say <laughs> in like conversations. And so that's why I was just like, okay, next question. Because I'm like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's Ben Shankman. That's my friend Ben. He lives uh, seven blocks south of me in Brooklyn, um, who plays Jeremiah. And he played that character so well. And a, I, think a, I think a lot of people identify with that. And he, people, people who feel socially awkward definitely identify with, with Jeremiah. Is he your favorite character in the show? Uh, I don't have a favorite. That's like all. Uh, you can you can say it. You can say it if he is. I I don't know. I can't pick a favorite. That's okay. Um, I I probably yeah. I probably actually say Evan because I I don't know. I just think he's hilarious. So. Good. Okay. <laughs> Good answer, Maya. <laughs> Good answer, Maya. <laughs> it's endless fun. <laughs> have you ever acted? Do you want to, do you have aspirations to be in the in the acting field ever? No, I mean I think it's like I always wish I could act, but I can't. I took an acting class in I think freshman year. And I, it did not go well. <laughs> so, how long ago was that? How long? Three years ago. Sorry, my math skills. I had. To, I'm like, what grade am I in? So, yeah, three years. Is it is it mostly actors that you love talking to? Do you talk to directors or writers, or are you really you're really um, fascinated by acting actors? Yeah. I've talked to a couple directors and writers and my sister's really into filmmaking. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would think about revisiting the idea that you could maybe do it if you like it this much. Um, I, you know, I was not good at it for a long time until I kept doing it until I became better. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. That acting class didn't go well because I could never, like, I couldn't memorize with, like, the scenes when we were in groups and he gave us scenes to do. I could never memorize any of the lines, so. Yeah, that's not, believe it or not, that's not that important. It's not that important all the time. I know many actors who you would be surprised at how famous they are who don't memorize their lines, who sometimes, and I'm not kidding, actually will take the script and like tape it to the other actor's shoulder or like chest so that they can see them. So if it's a memory issue only, I, w I still would think that it should, it's not worth, uh, it's worth investigating. Anyway, that's just me. Royal Payne's question. Um, I, so, um, could you relate to Evan in any way? So when the show first started, um, he was like super, um, superficial and like all he cared about is girls and money. And he was kind of a caricature. Uh, and I remember late in the first season, we, I was on a boat. There was, there was an episode where we were on a big boat for the whole thing. And Reshma was looking at her phone and she, and I, and I'm not on social, I'm still not on social media. I don't, it's just not something that I like, but she was showing me her Twitter and she's like, huh? And I'm like, what? And I looked and everyone hated Evan. 
And I was really um, like, oh my God, what? Everyone, and I showed the producer, goes, don't ever look at those, don't ever look at those. But second season, they made a distinct decision to like give him more dimensions, to make him more human. And he went from being like this really superficial, kind of like, like almost like a bad guy. Like I, that's how I saw it. Like he was just so self-involved and selfish. They made him a little more, you know, uh, softer. And then, then I felt more like the character. And then they kind of wrote for me and the character became more like me. And then it just became a strange blend. Um, but in the show, if, for people who have watched the show, in the show, he meets the girl that he loves marries her as children like i did all that while the show was shooting like not not during you know not while i was on set but in behind the scenes i all, all i kind of grew up along the same path as as evan which was pretty weird and magical oh cool um so did you have a favorite episode to film yes actually i do uh, we did a musical episode. Did you see that one? Yeah. At the end, we got Tom Kitt, who wrote, he was like a Tony winning guy, like Broadway guy to write these songs. And yeah, that was so much fun to shoot. Oh my gosh. It was like the best, like some of the best days of my life were that week. It was so much fun. And we were all sad because it was ending. And yeah, that was by far my favorite one. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we just start. So we've been rewatching the show, and we just got to season four. Um, yeah. And I actually, I one of my favorite episodes in season four is the I forget the name, but it's where um, Santino Fontana guest stars, and. Like the zombie one. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually, because to be honest, the first time we watched that, I didn't know who he was. Um, but now. I don't know who that is. I'm <laughs> blanking on I don't even know who you're talking about. I oh, remember well, the now zombie I know one. Who he is, and I was so excited to see that he guest starred. <laughs> you want to know some trivia about that episode? Yeah. There's a scene where me and Hank. <clears throat> Evan and Hank, me and Mark are in like a warehouse and he's like scaring me. And I go to a big window and I start banging on the window. <clears throat> no one told me it felt like plexiglass to me because they had put it up. It wasn't a natural part of the building. So I was banging on it and, but it was real glass and I punched my hand through it and I cut my, you can't really, maybe you can see it. I cut my wrist like pretty badly. So we had to stop shooting. I went to the hospital, which was luckily like 10 minutes away, got it stitched up, came back, and then we finished shooting that scene. And if you really look closely, you can see that there's a bandage underneath my sleeve. You have to really look carefully, though. Okay. I'll, well, I'm going to tell um, my mom and sister that we have to rewatch that episode now and look for the bandaid. <laughs> I have a video that I took of them actually suturing up my wrist which I'm going to send to you right now. Okay. There you go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you don't want to see that. It was really gross. Yeah. Were you wearing a creepy mask? I was, yeah, was going to say it? no, thank you. <laughs> no, the doctor was Marilyn Manson. It was so weird. He was there. He's everywhere. I don't know why he's, uh, is it, was the, oh, will you stop it? Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Don't you put, don't, Marilyn, I'm telling you, this is just getting more and more awkward every time. Okay? Goodbye. <laughs> I swear, I'm going to have nightmares now, and I'm going to blame you for them, so. Not as bad as the ones my son has. So, what's next? <laughs> so, you played um, Joey Tribbiani's brother, Michael, in the Friends spinoff, Joey. Um, yeah. What was it like to be part of a spinoff of such an iconic show? Have you seen the show? 
I ha I've been I've been looking for like where to watch it. I haven't I've seen Friends. I haven't seen Joey yet. It is the weirdest thing that they buried that show. It is the strangest like it's a spin-off of one of the biggest shows that's ever been made and it's not on iTunes. It's not on any streaming device. You can't get it. You can't you can't I don't even know if you could order it on eBay. You have to like go into the deep web or something to get it. Um, I actually was thinking recently, I'm like, man, if, if just because it, it was like seen as a big failure at the time, like a big, big failure. It was just like, Oh my God, everyone made fun of it on other shows. They would have Joe entourage made fun of it. You know, Matt just stopped acting for like four years afterwards. And then he bounced back amazingly. But um, I was thinking, I was like, man, it's not as bad as people think it was. It gets a little bad during the second season. Like it actually gets really bad. It starts to get really bad in the second season, but <laughs> just the, the fact that it's a friend spinoff, the fact that it's pretty good for the first season. And the fact that there's like a car accident element, like, you know, that something's going to be not great, which is why it got canceled. I feel like if that popped up on Netflix today, it would be huge. <laughs> Or like on HBO Max. I feel like everybody would be like, what's this about? Oh my gosh. Um, but getting back to your question, it was, uh, it was really weird. It was, um, I was in, I was, you know, day one, they said, here's your dressing room. This was David Schwimmer's dressing room for 10 years. And I was like, okay. Like I had watched Friends when I was in high school. Like I, it was a part, it was just like, before I was an actor, before I, before I was, did anything. So the idea that within 10 years, I went from my mom's basement watching friends to on the same stage with Matt, um, the first week they had to, they straightened my hair to look more like Matt's. And so they were doing my hair went before we were shooting and did just so happen that, David Schwimmer and Jennifer Aniston both showed up to say hi to Matt and Matt was also getting his hair done. So, but then the, then the hair person left and it was just those three catching up because they hadn't seen each other in a little while. And me just sitting there like a fly on the wall. And I was like, this is surreal, man. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> um, but it got normal pretty fast after that. And then it just became like a show. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I was so upset when they took friends off of Netflix and then my mom and Leia got me like the complete series. Um, On so iTunes? I, uh, no, like the actual like discs. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. I used to have those. I, w I had those. I watched those to like research before we started shooting. The big thick things. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Was well, it's on HBO Max now? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It yeah. Is. Sorry, mom. <laughs> that's a lot of handwork having to put those DVDs in and out. <laughs> yeah, well, the problem is like all because we have to disconnect like the Blu-ray to. You know, like if we watch something on like our mom's computer and we plug it into the TV and then I don't know how to plug it back into the Blu-ray. So I always have to wait for my mom to do it. it sounds <laughs> like they maybe should have just bought it on iTunes or got HBO Max. <laughs> um, but uh, that shows dedication that you're willing to go through that amazing toil just to watch Friends. <laughs> Yeah. I, miss, I miss DVDs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've been in so many um, different things, including the movie Road Wait a Trip. second. B b before we go to that, are, where are your, your mom and your sister, you say? Yeah. You live with? Where yeah. are they right now? They're downstairs. Can I meet them? Yeah. Let me go get them. Yeah. Like, why would they... I, I'm, I'm curious. Right, Chris? Oh, Chris is yeah, just you I, and me. I know them pretty well, <laughs> and I don't think I've seen them in the room, but maybe once, and then they go off somewhere. So, yeah, let's get, let's get them on screen. 
I'm just curious to see if they even exist. I think they're just different aspects of my personality. <laughs> it's possible. It's going to be her with two masks or, or yeah. like stuffed animals. Yeah, just like a broomstick with that mask on it and just like, hi, hey, I'm the mom. Like, and then, hey, this is, hey, mom, can you help me? <laughs> I want to watch Friends on the computer. Would you mind? Sure. <laughs> Remember, you got to unplug it, and then, oh, mom's mask fell off. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find oh, out. Oh, I know. I, I wanna, I'm going to scare them. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> hey, my sister's coming. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. You just, tell, you just tell me when they get here. I'm here. Well, my mom's here. <laughs> what? Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> He has done that to me so many times. That is incredibly creepy. I know. You're I, real. You're give me nightmares. I wasn't sure if you were real or not. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The old, the old real face is scarier than the mask. Okay. Just kidding. That, just old, kidding. <laughs> that old chestnut. Hey, it's a party. It's a party. <laughs> what are you guys doing down there? Homework. Just homework? That's it? What kind of homework? I have to edit a video. What kind of video? And what do you use, What software are you using to edit with? Uh, Hit, Film <laughs> Hit Film Express, and it's a virtual so, tour for incoming students. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's uh, So you're an editor. Are you? Are you going? Are you going to film school? I want to. Are you a little nervous and self conscious right now? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's like for us all the time <laughs> so I really all the time <laughs> yeah. um i that's exciting that you're that you're interested in film that you're in a film family i was just telling maya that if she likes acting so much she should try doing it and she's like oh i can she listed a whole bunch of reasons and i'm like no don't don't that's a cop out you can do it well, i think I, you can do it well, Okay, but one thing I told them was I can't memorize the lines. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, and I told her that there are many actors who don't have don't memorize their lines. And as I told her, there are some that are more famous than I would never want to mention their names who I worked with who will tape lines to other people's chest. But um, <laughs> you could do it. You could do a, you could do your version of it, Maya. I'm just I'm just telling you. Okay. Just telling you, seem to like it so much. I'm not gonna like force you guys to stay up here, but I did a want to see if you were in fact real and not just figments of my imagination. Or as Chris and I were saying, <laughs> puppets. <laughs> uh, but it was really nice to meet you guys. So nice to meet you. We're big fans. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything you want to say or ask or anything, I'm here for you right now. That's her job. We just stand here and smile. Okay. One thing I will say is, though it was a good idea to get Friends on DVD because it's not on Netflix anymore, um, it's really hard for Maya to figure out how to put the DVD player into the computer. So I was saying you may want to just get HBO Max where it's all for free now, I believe. We, we do have HBO Max, so I think I need to have a little chat with Maya. <laughs> When we unplug the uh, like blue right, I you guys went really deep in this. In yeah. This yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, look what I've created. Yes, I've stirred the pot. Questions, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Question It's what? just me, you guys, and Ariana right now. That's all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Ask me a question. Ask any question. Okay, so um, you've been in, wait, okay, now I don't know, what, what was the last question I asked you? <laughs> <laughs> Paula just completely blown up her interview uh, oh, no. system, and I love it. This is so this good. This is the best thing ever. It's like Inception. <laughs> How much deeper can we go? Is that even a house? Is it just a set? Are you guys even real? Are you actors? Am I dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> it's all um, a dream. <laughs> Mom, do you have any questions for me about anything? Uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay, sister. <laughs> no. <laughs> anything, even the filmmaking process. Even the filmmaking process. Um, I got nothing. <laughs> 
Oh, I know. Oh. I know <laughs> All right, Maya, take it away. I actually, I also. Maya's the pro here. We're just, you know. <laughs> I wanted to show you also with the um, symbol for royal pains. I have friends on here too. So. Aww. Uh, my sister drew it. I can't draw, so she drew it. <laughs> well, expl cool. explain what those are. Wait, but didn't I already explain what. Wait. To, to me at the beginning before Paulo got on, yeah. Tell Paulo oh, what he's even like. Yeah, I wasn't there for that. I'm like, that's a nice quilt, Maya. I don't know. <laughs> I can get out of here so you can actually okay. focus. Thank you. Such Sorry. a pleasure to meet you. You're awesome. You are. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and I will haunt you in your dreams. <laughs> and have fun. Okay, thank you. You guys are very distracting. You invited us up here. We're leaving. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I thought I, so. Um, My head's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, uh, I'm a senior this year at school. Um, and, uh, my sister and I are seniors and all the senior girls always decorate, like they get painters pants and decorate them for senior yeah. year. And so I, so Leia decorated her pants and then I couldn't decide what I wanted on mine. And she was like, oh, well, put symbols from like some of your favorite shows. So I have friends on here. Um, and so I have the picture yeah. frame and then I have since and Royal oh. Pains, you guys live in the Hamptons, I put a wave. Wow, you really like Royal Pains. That's great. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, um, yeah. Okay, sorry, my hand's bleeding. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. From what? What happened? Uh, my nail. <laughs> well, how bad is it? Not that bad. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> can you muscle through Maya? I think you can. Yeah. This is this is awkward. I'm like, well, <laughs> and like, is it band? Can I see it? Can you hold it up? Okay. Like yeah. to the camera. Oh, that's not great. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna need a band aid for that, Maya. Yeah. After the interview. <laughs> okay, I would give you one if I could. <laughs> um. So have you, um, you've been in um, so many different things, including the movie Road Trip and then the show Designated Survivor. Um, have you had a favorite project or character you've played? Yeah, that's a, we that's a hard one to like not say Royal Pains to because it was the longest and it was so much fun and it was like outdoors during the summer every it was like a summer camp every year we just shoot through the summer i feel so bad for your finger now it's all i can think about um <laughs> like That's under okay. the table you're just bleeding out and you're like it's <laughs> fine it's great i'm gonna lose in consciousness now um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah royal pains was really pretty heavenly i'm still friends with a lot of those people mark is a very very good friend of mine uh, Henry Winkler is extremely a wonderful friend still. Uh, ev in fact, everyone who worked on that show, including the crew, all of us were like, we're never going to find anything like this again. It was just, it was like a warm, it was like crawling into a hug every day. It was so, so, so nice. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, when we were um, watching you know, with Henry Winkler, when you guys like actually start to have like a relationship with him. I always, yeah. I was thinking, I was like, it's not always like that, but like every show shows that, that they just forgive each other. And then, but then I was like, but it's impossible yeah. not to like Henry Winkler. So like this show, I'm fine with it being like that, but not every other show. Yeah. He, yeah. He's like the nicest guy ever. Uh, you want to hear a cool story about him? 
So he's kind of known around Hollywood as like the nicest guy that there ever was. His reputation is that of the biggest mensch. Mensch is like a Jewish word for like best guy, does great wonder, does nice things for everybody, selfless. Um, yeah, well, my mom things. says One, that all the time, so. About Henry Winkler? No, just about like. Um, oh, Mensch. She's the word Family mensch. friend. She says that a lot. She says <laughs> that a lot. So. For a second, I was like, your mom just walks around the house saying, Henry Winkler's a Mensch. Henry Winkler's a Mensch. That Henry Winkler's a real Mensch. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> he was really nervous to audition, or no, he didn't audition, but he was really nervous about um, his meeting for Royal Pains because at that time, his career has had a huge resurgence with Barry now, and Ro Royal Pains kind of started that. He contacted them um, about the role, and he, he, he like, fought to, for that role. He was, I don't know, even, I don't even know if he was their first choice, or I, I don't know how that worked, but in his mind, he's like, I got to fight for this. I love this show. I want to be on this show. So when he met with them, he was so nervous. He tells this story. He was so nervous. He ordered pancakes. It was breakfast. And uh, he, in the middle of talking, he poured cream all over his pancakes instead of syrup. And they were like, whoa, whoa, you're pouring cream all over. And to cover, he's like, oh, yeah, that's what they do in Europe. You never had pancakes with cream? Oh, no, it's the best. You should try it. Try it. Try just a little piece with it. Oh, yeah, it's fluffy and it's, it soaks it in. It's amazing. You put the syrup on afterwards. But but it was not, it was not, he was totally just so nervous. He, he made a mistake. Um, <laughs> and then once on set, we were in a scene with like all these different um, act, like uh, background actors. And there was a little girl who was, she was somewhere and he was just sitting there quietly and he was looking around and he said, stop you. And he pointed to the girl and she's like, me. And he's like, yes, you move to your left. She's like, and she just like, and he goes further, further. Thank you. And, and it was kind of weird. I was like, what was that about? And I, afterwards I was like, Henry, what was that? And he goes, Oh, I checked the frame. If she, uh, if she was sitting over there, she wouldn't have been in the shot. I, ma I made sure she was in the shot because she was excited to be here. And I was like, that's a good Henry Winkler moment. That's <laughs> yeah. like the kind of guy he is. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so do you have any upcoming projects? Right now, no. Um, the ongoing project that I am working on, however, is a uh, short film that my son is writing and directing. So my son, I shoot movies with him all the time. And uh, when I direct, he gets annoyed because he's like, you're always telling me what to do and how to be and how to act and what to do and where to stand. And I was like, well, Jack, what are, why don't you write something then and you can direct me and you can tell me anything you want me to do and say. And so we sat down and we wrote a scene uh, and I shot it with me as the lead. I mean, I chose all the angles and whatnot, but I shot it like a real scene in like a movie or a show. Um, and it turned into like an actual movie that we're making. Uh, so every time we go to like a new location, we'll write a new scene for the movie. And I think we're going to be shooting this movie maybe for, I don't know, for the entirety of COVID. Like he's going to grow old in it. He shows up in it too every once in a while. But uh, that's what I'm working on. It's called The Marshmallow Kidnap. <laughs> and it is very funny. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been watching, like, a ton of movies during quarantine. And, like, I love, um, I love thrillers. And so I was telling my sister, I was like, it just seems like it would be so fun to be in a thriller. And she was like, well, you write it and we'll make it. And so I'm, like, trying to write it now. Well, is your sister, like, does she write things? Um... Yeah. So what, what we've been doing, and again, it's like, I'm a director too. Like I, I directed Royal Pains a few times um, and I've directed other things, but to keep like, just to keep having, just to keep our, the juices flowing. Every time one of Jack's friends has a birthday, we'll make a, a very extravagant video, like edited, like all, very kind of glossy professional thing, just because for fun. 
to the point where now I, I feel like inclined to do that for every one of his friends, which is not fun. But <laughs> you and your sister, all you need is an iPhone. Just write something um, and shoot it. She's an editor. She can edit it. And you'd be surprised at how cool, how good it feels to write something and actually do it and complete it and be like, whoa, that's amazing. We shot at different angles. You know, you can use anybody as actors. It'd be a good way for you to start acting, to cut your teeth a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I Because we've been talking about it for a couple months. So now after this interview, I'm going to go down and I'm going to say, Paulo said we need to do this. So, like, It could be as simple as like a funny, one funny conversation at the, at the breakfast table and just shoot it, you know? But absolutely, you should absolutely do it. It's, it, it, makes, it makes quarantine so much fun. Yeah. That's, my, that's, that's my son and I's recipe. And the movie's actually really funny. We shot, on an, I, I, there's an underwater scene in it. I covered my iPhone with like this weird see-through pouch and we shot a full scene underwater. Like it's a two minute scene where we, it looks like we never surface. Wow. Cool. Um, so uh, is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Um, two things. Uh, Alone. Have you heard of Alone? No. So season six is on Netflix. Alone is a reality show where survivalists are dropped in the Arctic by themselves with nothing but like 10 tools and camera equipment. So they're completely alone and they have to stay out there through the winter for a hundred days or whatever. Um, and it's a competition to see who can last the longest. Uh, I don't know why I'm drawn to that. I think maybe because of COVID. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm more interested in watching real people like actually go through crazy things and deal with actual real life adversity right now. Uh, that's why I, maybe I'm drawn to it, but it's a very, very addictive show. I've watched every season. It's on Hulu and Netflix. And now the current season is even the craziest. Like I'm talking like, you know, they kill like they kill big, you know, big creatures and they have to gut them while wolves are howling in the distance. And like, it's real. So if you haven't seen Alone, I would watch the first couple episodes on Netflix right now. Um, and to go to sleep at night, because my son is really interested in, in, in my old G.I. Joe toys. Uh, I found G. I found the original cartoon of G.I. Joe on Tubi for free. So uh, to go to sleep, I've been watching the 1983 cartoon animated show of G.I. Joe, which is really a show I'm not going to show my son. It's a lot of mixed messaging. Um, it's, you know, a lot of guns and things, but it's, it's for some reason nostalgically calming to me right now. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, my family and I have been binge watching um, Royal Pains and then Frasier. <laughs> of course yeah of course. i mean i mean it goes without saying obviously also i'm always binge watching royal pains too like i watch three episodes a day just to, to keep my ego fed um <laughs> you know so that's always great too but uh, yeah frazier's a great show yeah um yeah so if you had to be trapped in a tv show for one month, what show would you want to be trapped in and why? <laughs> would not be alone. I can tell you that much. Uh, trapped in a show. Star Trek The Next Generation. No question, no question at all. Oh, cool. um, because Again, that's a weird that for for me. Are you okay with that finger? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You sure? Did you like yeah. break off your nail? Yeah. <laughs> you broke I, it off. No, I didn't break it off, but it was coming off, and so it just like we were talking, and it just came off. So. Yeah. Does it hurt? No. Okay. I'm just periodically checking on it. You're just <laughs> fascinated at looking at your 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 nail stump. No, I, I'm just making sure it's not getting worse while we're talking. Got it. If it does, let me know, and we could this 
I'm not that important. Um, <laughs> Star Trek. Have you ever seen Star Trek: The Next Generation? The no. show. Uh, that show. I grew up with that show. Um, it was. Um, it's just the, the. It's it's like chicken soup for my soul. That show. Everything about it, like the sound of the engines. Patrick Stewart's so good. The actor. The. the it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it will always be my favorite show, the one that I rewatched the most over the years. And I would love to just be on that show for a moment. I wouldn't want to be like some like ensign, though. I'd want to be like some sort of cool commander of some kind. Oh, cool. Well, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? My wife is the first person who comes to mind. Um, cause she deals with, she deals with, she's, she's been, she has been a superhero dealing with school and my son and everything during this time. Um, you are another one. Um, you probably are just like, I'm Maya, whatever. But if you think about, you know, I don't know how many other 17 year old girls have this kind of thing going on. Um, it's pretty, uh, outstanding what you've done. It's pretty outstanding what you've been through but also how you've managed to turn it into this and change and, and make, you know, make something, make something special, which I hope. And that's why I keep saying, if you're interested in acting and stuff, you should, you should, you should utilize this and you should do it. Um, yes. That's the answer to that question. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, that, that was the most important one. So uh, I don't know, The Rock, The Rock kind of, <laughs> I got to throw The Rock in just because he actually does seem like he's a real superhero. <laughs> he's just the most amazing person ever. And he's just such a wonderful guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd say my mom and um, my sister. And then I'd say James O'Day, who's on the Pushing Dead poster. So James O'Day's a very talented man. Yeah. I know him. He's a oh, good guy. Oh, cool. Yeah, I um, I inter his um show a million little things. I'm obsessed with that show and Psych, and so I've been watching Psych again. Um, and yeah, I interviewed the creator of a million little things like two years ago, and he put James Day on the phone, <laughs> and my mom was standing behind the camera and she had to remind me to breathe. She was like, breathe and say hi. <laughs> yeah, he's done some awesome things. The new psych movie. I haven't seen the new psych movie yet, but I want to. Um, all right, now we should wrap this up because they just got home and I and my son is stomping around and I know that she'll need help in a second. Okay. Um, well, uh, thank you so much for calling in. I had so much fun talking to you. Me too. I really did. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy for you and your mom and sister are adorable. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, I hope you guys don't, I hope you, no, don't, don't tell them that. Gosh, no, tell them I said that they were very annoying when I met them. <laughs> um, but, but I hope I didn't cause some serious drama about that, that Blu-ray player you know, now. So if you have a big fight, a piece of me, I will feel kind of like, yeah, I mean, yeah. the mischievous part, but um, really nice to meet you, both of you. And I guess I'm going to hang up now. Is that what I do?